Come on into the ditch. I'm your resident ditch witch, Tara Tyne, and we're about to get witchy, whether you like it or not. So there's probably a lot of you watching this who have dreams of running off to the wilderness and living there forever. And one of your main motivating factors might be the cost of living in the middle of nowhere. And the fact that properties in the countryside will generally cost a lot less in urban areas. And for those of you who've been following along my journey for some time now, you may have noticed a playlist on my channel called Property and Home for 25K. So the question we are here today to answer is, can I get a home for 25,000 euro in Ireland? The short answer is, hell no. But that doesn't mean that you can't leverage that 25 grand into a permanent home for yourself. If you go on to Daft, that's Ireland's property website, and look for properties that cost 25 grand like I did just before I started filming this video, you'll find that currently there is one property listed at 25,000 euro. But as usual, that is only a starting price for auction and you need five grand up front to buy into that auction in the first place. So there's a very good chance that that property cost in 25K could easily double in price once it goes to auction, such is the demand for housing at the lower end of the price spectrum in Ireland today. And if you're like me about 10 years ago, you're thinking to yourself, if I could only get 20,000 euro, I'd be able to secure housing for myself. And 10 years ago, maybe you could have. I was basing that plan on properties I had seen, which were very reasonably priced, at least compared to today's prices. But of course, by the time I managed to scrape that 20K together, property prices had gone through the roof and it was no longer possible to buy one outright for that price. But what we are going to do is look through a couple of the outside the box options that you mightn't have thought of. So if you're clicking into this video, there's a very good chance that you're not too sure that you'd be able to get a mortgage. And look at, no judgment, you are not alone there. Getting a mortgage today in Ireland is harder than it has ever been before. Remember the days when you used to be able to get a house and a car, maybe two cars and an annual holiday on one person's income? Yeah, well I know couples where both are working professionals and they still can't get a mortgage so there is absolutely no shame in that and for those who are prepared to as I say think outside the box get a little bit creative with it there might just be a way around it if you too have managed to put some money in the piggy bank so option the first consider your local credit union not everybody thinks of this option especially if they're not in high paid full-time employment but actually the credit unions criteria for giving loans to people is a lot gentler than most banks. And even people who are on social welfare payments, for example, can get, I believe it's up to three times the amount of their annual income, even if that income comes from the government. You might be able to get about another 30,000. Now, as you'll know, if you've been following along on my property videos, that even 50 or 55,000 euro is still not an awful lot to play with when it comes to purchasing property because the chances are the property you're going to get for that price is going to need a lot of money before it's actually livable. But if you can be flexible with that, if there are services on site and you're prepared to live in some kind of temporary accommodation, then maybe that 30,000 worth of a loan is going to be all you need to get yourself on the property ladder. So do go and speak to your local credit union. I have heard reports from people saying that a uh, car loans generally speaking are what the credit union want to give out money for i'm not so sure that they'd be as upfront about giving you thirty thousand euro for a house especially if you're not in full-time employment and especially if you're having to move away from your job in order to get that loan but look i'm just giving you the info that i've been given you do what you will with it another option that you might want to consider and this is a thing that i have heard of people doing although I think it's becoming increasingly difficult these days, what with different regulation around unused land, agricultural versus residential land and that sort of thing. But if you happen to know somebody who has a lot of land and perhaps needs a little extra income to help them make ends meet, that person might be prepared to rent a portion of that land to you 
or perhaps even sell it to you so that you could pull a camper van onto it, put a mobile home onto it, build some kind of a tiny home or a log cabin or similar. Again, the laws are very, very, very strict around this and I will link somewhere up here <laughs> a video I did not so long ago about some of the commonly held myths around the legislation and loopholes that apply to low-cost housing in Ireland. The long and the short of it is you're only going to get in trouble if you get caught and that usually happens when somebody objects or if you're trying to do what you're trying to do in a very public and visible place. So again, I'm not judging, I'm just giving you the information. You do what you will with it. Now it's probably a good time to say that I am not giving legal advice here. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not qualified to do so. So when the guards or the council or the bailiffs or whoever comes knocking, do not tell them that I told you. I take no responsibility in what you do with the information that is readily available out there on the internet. I'm only gathering it up, curating it, and putting it on YouTube for entertainment purposes only, of course. Yeah, so consider working with somebody who already has land. And if you can access a situation like that, you might find that your 25 grand goes quite a long way. After all, there are more people than we can count living in their parents' gardens these days, and an awful lot of them get away with it. So, option the third, investors. This is also a thing that I've heard of actual real people doing, where say for example, you have plans for some kind of commercial venture once you acquire your home slash property. Airbnb is massively popular now. Maybe you're thinking about buying in an area which is popular with tourists. And maybe you know somebody with the money to back you up who wants in on that action. Maybe you'd like to establish some kind of a retreat center. Maybe you'd like to host workshops. There are a number of projects that potential investors might be interested in getting involved in. So don't rule those out. Particularly if you've got any kind of business savvy, if you've been watching a particular market for a while now, if you have particular passions and interests which are marketable. But I think the most important caveat for this one is knowing the right people. You're going to need to know somebody that has the money to back you up and we don't all have rich friends. So this one isn't going to be an option for everyone. And option the fourth, okay, and I, I didn't tell you this, but I have heard of people buying a patch of forested ground, buying an acre or two in a very remote area and just moving a tiny home onto it. Okay, again, if your neighbors can't see it and they're not complaining, then apparently there are people out there who are getting away with it. Hi, Editing Tara here jumping in with the fifth option that filming Tara totally forgot about. If you'd care to direct your attention to this rather interesting article from the Irish Independent published on the 15th of October 2011, you will note that there has been legal precedent for an unfinished and empty home in a ghost estate being awarded by default to the man brave enough to move his seven children into it and make it habitable for them. According to the article, after viewing pictures of the improvements he had made to the two-story home, Judge Catherine Staines dismissed the case, saying there was no evidence that he had intended to commit an offence. Once the accused man found out who the property's owner was, he offered to pay rent to the NAMA member, although the article is unclear whether rent has been paid on the home since then. It should also be noted that the man did not break and enter on the property. According to him, it was open when he found it. And it should definitely be noted that the article is more than 11 years old, which is plenty of time for the laws to have tightened up, meaning there's no guarantee whatsoever that a case like this would be similarly dismissed today. Again, this is not legal advice, okay? Nothing I have said in this video is guaranteed to work. I'm just stirring the creative pot of ideas. What you pull out of that pot and choose to actually consume is your own business. But look people, it's tough out there, okay? It's really, really tough. There's a lot of people with their back to the wall who have been working really hard and saving really hard for a long time, who can't get a mortgage and who see no way out of the terminal rent trap that a lot of us are finding ourselves in these days. So I would invite you if you've pulled a bit of a stroke and got away with 
something to share it in the comments but I have a feeling you're not going to want it and that's okay. I say once you're harming no one and being considerate and respectful towards the environment you live in then have at it. Fair play to you. We all deserve to have a safe and secure home to live in. And things are very, very different now from how they were a generation or two ago. And full disclosure, if you've made it this far in the video, most of the money that we had to put down on this house came from an inheritance that I received. In the grand scheme of things, it was quite a small inheritance. But in the context of resources to secure long-term housing for myself with, it was a massive help. So I'm not gonna pretend that we all just have 25 grand sitting around in our bank accounts but for those of you who do I hope some of the options I've shared here today give you some food for thought and maybe a creative way to approach the situation if you've been endlessly scrolling through daft and just feeling really dejected and disappointed by the absolute lack of affordable options out there so look at don't give up, keep plugging away at it if you're in a position to be able to save right now keep going Otherwise, maybe play the lotto the odd time. And otherwise, maybe say a little prayer that some eccentric billionaire is just gonna come along and decide to sort out Ireland's housing solution because God knows there's no sign of the government doing it. Also, I vaguely remember the World Health Organization doing a study back in 2008, maybe 2009, that said moving house was the number one most stressful thing that could happen to a person. Above bereavement, above divorce. Where are they? advocating in this global housing crisis. Hit subscribe for more fun and witchy property adventures. I upload every Thursday and you're not gonna wanna miss it. Slán agus bánacht, goodbye and good luck to you. If you've been watching my content, if you liked this video and would like to know a free way to support this channel, please scroll down to just below the video and click that little like button. Because for some reason, YouTube gets very excited when you do that. My views go up, my ad revenue goes up. I don't know how it works. It's a bit like witchcraft.